So does this get me? Good evening. Welcome to the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box presented by Team FYN Sports. Joined as always by Jeff Kate at the Jeff Kate on Twitter and Coach Mark Stone. Guys, how are we doing tonight? Wonderful. Doing good. Uh, uh, yep, getting geared up for another uh, exciting Friday night. Got a lot of great matchups we'll talk about coming up in the second segment, but uh, a lot to talk about from last week. There were a bunch of great games, so uh, uh, playoff pushes pushes here. We're nearing October. It's starting to get cooler outside, so yeah, it's uh, it's getting more and more exciting as the season wears on. So, yeah, I was I was at Max County last week. You, you said you said cooler weather. Let me tell you, I, I was in long pants. A long shirt and a and a vest. I was and we were out on the deer stand on the way sidelines. And let me tell you, it was cold. Uh, and Mexico County got the best of McMinn Central. Uh, we'll say a lot to a little, sixty-one to nothing. That, that, and uh, Mexico County's just that good. And I mean, they're they're fantastic. They're fun to watch. And um, Coach Fitch got it going on all over there. Uh, Jeff, what was the Coca-Cola Red Zone game of the week last week? Uh, we we actually ventured into the Yellow Hammer State in Alabama as uh, North Jackson hosted South Pittsburgh for the first meeting between those two schools. Uh, South Pitts had history with uh, you know the other schools before they combined to form North Jackson, but yeah, first time ever, three decades in the making, and uh, what a classic it was. Uh, you know, we'll talk more about that game in depth, but yeah, South Pitt came back from a big uh, halftime deficit to get a twenty-one twenty win on the road in the final seconds. So, but yeah, we'll talk about that more in depth in the uh, in the second segment here. Coach Stone, where were you at last Friday? I I ventured over to to Meigs County and stayed uh, stayed incognito, but uh, you know I uh, I just I I decided Friday afternoon that's where I wanted to go, and I went over there and took a look. Um, you know, Meigs County, Coach. I thought they I think they're a very good football team. I, I really do. Coach Fitzgerald does a great job. Uh, they got good athletes, seems like all over the field. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, I, I was, I was very impressed by them. Oh, well, I was too. And they were, they were, they were really fun to watch. You know, they did things the right way, put a lot of power eye, a lot of, they didn't really throw the ball that much. They is a, a true ground attack with, with, with that offensive line size that they had. Yep. That offensive line as well. Um, talking about athletes, a guy who knows athletes pretty well in this area. We're going to welcome Dave Keelan of the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week onto the podcast. Dave, how are you doing tonight? Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. He's got the best-looking chair of, of them all. He's <laughs> rocking there in that big recliner. Man. Well, this is this is Game Central, Coach. This is where I, this is where I sit, you know, every, pretty much every Saturday. I've got a nice little – Nice little dip here in the chair. It's uh, it's my my game central. So, I, of course, pretty much every day I sit in this thing. You got eighty inch uh, TVs all around, especially right? on Saturdays. You got eighty inch. Just one TVs. big one right in front of me. <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, I usually have my I have my laptop up over here. Maybe have a couple games going. Different stuff there you like go. That. So yeah, this is uh, that's good. This, uh, from from about noon till till about ten thirty or eleven o'clock at night, or as long as I can stay awake. I, this this is kind of where I am. If there's not a UTC game in town, which we got one this weekend, so I'll be doing sidelines for that one as well. So, if uh, uh, I got a friend that calls me ever ever Saturday night, you know, about nine o'clock, you gonna watch that West Coast game? <laughs> I'm wore out already. I done played <laughs> seven games today. I used to watch those, but now my my yeah, my body just won't let me handle those ten or 11, 10, 11 o'clock games. I was. That's I mean. though, I did, I, I'm a big Fresno State fan. Way back when Pat Hill was there, I loved. I love Fresno State. I used to have watched them quite a bit, but now I, it, it's it's not worth staying up that late. Preacher won't let you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, let's. Uh, you know, I, I do want to preface this by saying Dave and I talked about this, but uh, you know our audience doesn't know this. So we are cutting into his pro wrestling time here as his podcast is being recorded on Wednesday night. So uh, Dave, first of all. Yep. Thank you for committing your time to uh, to join you know this this podcast in, in light of you know the AEW uh, going on live right now. So we definitely appreciate the time and the sacrifices you're making right now to join us tonight. Well, it, I mean, it, I can see it right behind the camera here, so it, I, it's not <laughs> like I'm totally disconnected. It's just that the sounds down. I'll I'll go back and rewind it and watch it here in a little bit. 
I, you know, I can fast forward through the commercial, so it's a, it's a good thing here. Exactly. But uh, I guess let's just dive right into it, man. I mean, you know, we uh, had a lot of great ma matchups last week. Uh, you guys were in North Georgia for your uh, the CW uh, Chattanooga Friday Night Rivals game of the week. And I uh, got a little small one coming up here this Friday night uh, between Baylor and McCauley. So just kind of talk about, I guess, you know, this is a Southeast Tennessee show, but uh, just kind of talk about, you know, what you saw last week and what you've seen kind of leading up into this game coming up with Baylor McCauley, who you've seen this year around this area and who, who has stood out to you, good or bad. Uh, you know, as we're nearing the, the beginning of October. Well, I've seen I've seen quite a few teams. Um, you know, we're going into week seven this week. It doesn't seem that seem possible, but um, I think obviously we're going to see the best team we've seen all year uh, when we see Macaulay this week. Um, you know, I think without a doubt, Macaulay's probably hands down the best team in the state. I would love to see Macaulay and Oakland play uh, this year because I think those are those are the two best teams in the state, without a doubt. Um, but again, I think Macaulay or uh, Baylor is 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 one of the better teams too. I think it's going to be a great showdown. It's a top five matchup between both of those teams. Um, you know, I, you guys were talking about Meigs County earlier. I saw Tyner play uh, at the beginning of the year against Howard, and I know Coach uh, Scott Chandler. He was really excited to get to work with Tyner, uh, and I think this year we're going to get to see Tyner and Meigs County finally. Uh, that's a region game for them, and I think that's uh, that's going to be a great showdown between those two um, later on this year. Uh, or is that this week? I, I, I haven't looked at the schedule. Outside of Baylor McCauley, I pretty much don't really look at anything else this week because I know there's there's a, there's quite a few other games that are that are lined up with this one, but I think Tyner and uh, Meigs County is going to be a fantastic game uh, this year. Um, of course, Marion County, too. I, I, I said there's probably about four teams in that region that really have a legit shot of, of winning that region. And I think Megs, uh, Tyner, Marion, um, and I thought Bledsoe County, you know, they, I, I really, we were supposed to have them against Megs County earlier this year. Um, and that game was canceled due to COVID. And I really wanted to see that game because I think Megs County uh, and Bledsoe would probably be battling it out. I don't know if, I don't know if Bledsoe's there yet to, to compete with Megs, but I think um, there's a legit, Good shot of four teams who who could easily win that region um, this year. Um, who else? Oh man, um, you know we th this last week was our first weekend to in North Georgia. Oh, well, it was mine. It, we, it was our second uh, game in North Georgia. We had we had LFO and Cahulla Creek. Danny Wilson, who was at South Pittsburgh, uh, is at uh, excuse me at Cahulla Creek now. Uh, Vic Grider, he's got him. Uh, working on his defense over there. Um, and I think there's great things going on. That school has never won more than two games in their 10 year history, uh, more than two games a season. And now they've won three of their last five. So uh, Coach Wills is doing great things. He's just a, kind of a rebuilder of programs. You know, he, he, he took over that program at South Pittsburgh with the Maribel Heritage and now he's at Cahulla Creek and, and has kind of flipped a lot of those um, a lot of those programs and it's kind of what he does is just rebuild programs. And I think he's in a great spot at Cahulla Creek. Um, but again, as far as that goes, I, we've seen a lot of great teams this year and, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more as the, as the season progresses. Well, obviously, you know, you know, like we mentioned, obviously this week is big with Baylor McCauley. That's going to be everybody's game of the week, but there are some other, uh, you kind of under the radar region matchups in this area, I guess, let's just start with the, it's also going to be our Coca-Cola red zone game of the week. Uh, Central going to East Hamilton to take on the Hurricanes. Uh, both teams unbeaten in region play. You know, East Hamilton had a had a one point defeat there in the fourth quarter against McMinn County last week. So I know Coach Reynolds is going to be preaching to his team and getting his team motivated because this Central team has improved tremendously. You know, they almost have every starter back from last year, and ever since Kurt Jones came back, you can see the program slowly building. They were younger when he first took over, but that experience is. Uh, We'll, we'll see if they're able to kind of go toe to toe with uh, East Hamilton's athletes. We know what they have. So, uh, what, what, what do you see in that matchup? Uh, I guess to start off. Well, Kurt Jones told us a couple of years ago in a pregame show that we had at Finley Stadium at the Jamboree. He said, "We're awfully young this season," and this was in 2019. Um, I guess it was preseason 2019, and we had them and they're in our season opener against Notre Dame. And he said. He said, guys, he said, we're not, we're not that good right now. But he says, I've got a group of freshmen and sophomores that here, he said, in a couple of years, he says, I think I've got something here. And, you know, 
Coach Stone, you, you probably know this. I I don't really trust coaches when it come when they come to talking about their teams because they can either mean. they can poor mouth them, they can poor mouth their teams, and they can do all this and then come out and it's it's lying. I, I used to I'm friends with coach with the coach that used to be at Knox Catholic, and he would say we're not very good as they're going through and they didn't lose a game all season and win a state championship. Yeah. I was like, okay, I said, listen, trust me, I don't I don't I don't I don't take what coaches say. I take it kind of with a grain of salt. But Kurt, you know, he told us a couple of years ago, and I think that's with a lot of coaches. They'll say, you know, we may have something here, and and then something doesn't pan out. But I think Central, had, they called their shot. I think they're they're very good. You know, they've won their last four games. They lost their season opener against Campbell County, um, and I think they're they're very good. And and hey, this game this week that could be the the region decider because you know Central they've got that they've got that big win over Red Bank a couple of weeks ago. East Hamilton they they play Red Bank at the end of the season, so. I think this this could be the game that's going to decide the region between Central and East Hamilton. And, and I guess you know let, let's just I mean if if I would like to have known the odds you know if, if anybody thought that this game right here could likely decide the number one spot in the region if anybody predicted that back in the, at the beginning of August then they they definitely would have made a lot of money for sure because I think Central's definitely you know I'm sure like it you said coach go ahead yeah. It wasn't on my FanDuel app at the beginning of the year. I, I didn't have sure. this one as a region as a region game, uh, but and I, no one did. You know, again, but it, again, Chris Quake and I, we all kind of we all kind of went back to that that time. And Coach uh, Jones told us he said, "Guys, we may have something here with our freshman and sophomore." And now it's it's starting to come to fruition. So we 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 were warned. We just didn't really listen that well. You know, I think high school coaches are more apt to not bad mouth their team. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, because, I mean, there's some young, tender young men right there. And, you know, the guy that, that they look up to, if he shows up on TV or something, well, we're not, you know, we're not going to be good for another two or three years. You know, they may they may prove him right. <laughs> and I, I never yeah. was one that I, I always tried to be positive about our program. And – uh you know, but I, I never, I never ever wanted to put it down in, you know, out in public and, uh, you know, quietly that is, but that I, you know. Well, I'll tell you this, most of the stuff that they, they told us that off camera, I'll, I'll say that I'll, I'll yeah. reveal sources, but they, they tell us off camera saying, I don't know, we're, we just, we just don't know if we're very good or not. And then, you know, they're coming out and they're, they're competing for state championships. And I, that's, that's why I say that because no. they don't want, Want to, they don't want to blow their team up too big, but then also they want to they they want to keep kind of things under wraps as well. And I'm like, look, coaches, well, I'm not going. I don't, I don't go to the other opposing coaches and tell them what you got. No, if you're I know good, you're but, good. But coaches talk that way to each other. I don't know how yeah. it would be. Uh, but, <laughs> well, I mean, Nick Saban's a good classic case of that. You know. They may be playing Central Arkansas one week, and he's like, you know, we've got to get better, or or we're going to get beat. Central Arkansas is a really good team, and it's like, okay, coach, we 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 understand. It it's kind of that that same mentality now. My first team in 1985 at uh, McMinn Central, we had about 75 freshmen on our freshman team, and you know, with inside our group of coaches. You know, we knew we were going to be good come 1989, and and, and we were. And uh, you know, it it, it just it, it you got to be careful. You, you got to be careful with with those with those young guys. Was Chad Not, Gooden one of those freshmen at McMinn Central? No, Chad Gooden was a senior. But I'm going to tell you something about Chad Gooden real quick. When I interviewed for the job, of course, I had played at Central, and, and when I interviewed for the job, I went out by the stadium, and Chad was out there. And uh, he said, uh, Coach, I hope you get the, the job. And uh, he said, I'm going to tell you, he said, we're going to do anything we can for you to make this program better. And we were four and six, and I tell you what, uh, to be four and six, I felt pretty good at the end of that because I had guys like, Chad Good, but Chad Chad's was brother. a Chad, go ahead. I'm sorry. Chad Chad was a senior that first year there. 
I, the reason I bring that up, Chad's brother was uh, was my roommate in college, Matt. So I, I I know the Good and family very well, and and they are you know just a a staple in the in that big man central community, and I think they're uh, they they've about. I don't know. I, they're they're getting close to probably running out of a few goodness in the McMinn Central. They're having good kids in so. there now. Westlake probably today. They there's goodens and there's goodens and bakers and Mass and Gales. Mass and Gales and man, I'll tell you. But uh yeah. Dave we, we And they're all the related. Game. They're all related. Yeah. 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 Dave, we've uh, we've talked about the game of the week. We've talked about a few other games. Well, we talked about this last week. What has been your favorite setting on the sideline? You know, maybe a, a stadium or, or, or an atmosphere. Give give us some of your top you know atmospheres from that you've been a part of. Uh, well, I'm a Ray County boy, so obviously Evansville is always going to going to hold that special place in my heart. Um, of course, this week Baylor Macaulay, since they've moved it back to the to the campus it takes on a, a life of itself because, you know, at Baylor, it, it's so spread out over there. Um, they can, you know, they can have like, you can, they had the big tailgates right there on the, on the green, right in front of the, the, the uh, field house. It's just, and it starts all day. I mean, it's, it's like tomorrow or Friday, whenever we go in uh, at Macaulay, they're, they're closing down the main gate at three o'clock and we have to go through a back gate. Um, to get in and it's going to be shut down and there's going to be people just jam packed in there. And Macaulay is just a different animal too, because it is so, it's so intimate uh, of a stadium and it's just packed and, and, the, and the kids are in there by five 30 uh, before the game and they're back and forth. And it's, it's by the time kickoff rolls around, it's just uh, an unbelievable atmosphere. And that's why I'm so glad that we can broadcast it, but, but television doesn't do it justice because it's, 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 literally the Super Bowl for these kids, some of these kids who probably will never play um, another down of football after they graduate high school. So it, it's really special. And I, I think Chattanooga, and I, 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 don't, I hope those kids don't take that for granted because not every school has a rival. And it's like I used to say whenever we were at Ray County, we didn't have a rival. Ever, we, we, won, we didn't like anybody, you know, whether it be McMinn County, whether it be Cleveland, whether it be Bradley, whether it be Cumberland County, you know, Red Bank, all these teams. We didn't really have a rival because we didn't like anybody, and they didn't want they didn't like us. So, you know, that's I think it's special to have that one special team. Um, South Pittsburgh is another great place to go. It's it's small, but to go if you go in there on a Friday night, it's still that small town feel. Um, when you go in, there, I mean, you look on down the you go down the street and you see just shops closed, but the windows are painted. And everybody in town is is right there, and and you know it because the lights are on at the stadium, and everything else is kind of dark, and you just see all that stuff. Um, let's see, Meigs County is another great place. Uh, I, I I think that's a a fantastic place to watch a game. Um, uh, Coach Fitzgerald, he's a good Ray County boy, and I told him, you know, I said, you know, Coach, this reminds me of what Ray County football used to be like because everybody in town, they would. We would load up and go to the game, or we would go somewhere else. We'd used to go to we'd used to go to McMinn County, and you'd you'd have to take the ferry across at at, at that night, you know, at you know five o'clock in the, or four o'clock in the afternoon, and you had to make plenty of time to get out there. And then, of course, Charles Smith was going to hold the ferry for you after the game, and it may be, you know, eleven, twelve, one or two o'clock in the morning by the time you get back, and you're down there with your buddies from third, fourth grade, skipping rocks to the river, waiting, counting cars to see how many it's going to take to get on there. So. <laughs> You know, that was that's some of the stuff that I think about. And, you know, I know uh, Meigs County, that, that small town football field, and, and it's a great place to go. Uh, yeah, Dave, just we want to thank you again for joining us for sure. But just got a couple more games to kind of pick your brain about before we let you go. Uh, let's let's start with another big region game. And, and it's been fairly competitive the last couple of years, especially as Ray County, Walker Valley. I know obviously uh, Walker Valley's got two losses, but it's two two 6A teams that are ranked in the top 10 in Bradley Central and Cleveland. And uh, Ray County is after that week one loss at Alcoa where, you know, everybody loses to Alcoa pretty much. They've been rolling. And, uh, you know, that that game is pretty much the de facto region championship, I think, as well, just because of how, you know, McMinn County, Udawa and Howard aren't, you know, kind of what where they want to be. So kind of talk about that game just a little bit if you can, because obviously you said you're a Ray County guy. You know them very well. And uh, are, are, do you think it'll be another – 
uh, one possession game because the last two games have been decided by a total of nine points. Yeah, it, here's the thing about Ray County's offense. They can go as fast as they want to go or they can go as slow as they want to go. We saw it a couple of weeks ago against Udawa. They could take they could take a drive and, you know, limit your limit your possessions um just by, you know, they they had three and four yards you to death. Um and they'll work it to death. But now, granted, they can depending on the athletes that they have in place, they have uh, a great quarterback with Caleb Martin. He's just a sophomore. Um, and he is he is coming around, and he is throwing the ball really well. Um, and you know, I've talked to Pemberton before. He said, you know, we we get the we get the the reputation of being a wing T, run it down your throat type teams. But he goes, I've taken players in this offense, and I've thrown for about three thousand yards before too. So I could do different things with it, and he can. I mean, he, he's he's proven that at Knox Catholic. He's taken that offense, and he could do so many things and so many versatile things. Um, but I think it's a, uh, it's a great matchup. Um, Walker Valley, I know they've been, they've been stretched out with McCaw with, uh, with Bradley and Cleveland and, and a couple other, uh, games there. But, uh, I think this is, uh, it's a good, t- it's, it's going to be a good test for Ray County. If, 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 if Drew A can get this offense working, in which we know that he has the capabilities, if he's able to, to, to start throwing um and you know he's able to exploit some things secondary in the secondary for ray county this could be a long game um but i think you know ray county usually prides themselves on running the ball and and how they can play defense so it's going to be a physical game we definitely know that um we know that that walker valley knows they're going to be in a war which they've been in them this year um but ray county i think they proved that first game of the year with alcoa again again that's a wash you you pretty much just kind of you kind of find out where you are. Pemberton said it, it. They exposed a lot of their weaknesses, which was good for them, so they could kind of fix all that. Um, I really wanted to see where they might have been with Elizabethan, but that game was canceled. Um, I think it was really telling to see that Ray County had improved a lot with that win over Anderson County. That was a quality program. Um, Anderson County is probably about right around the same range as Ray County. Um, as far as that goes, we know they've got athletes. They're always one of the top programs in 4A. So I think that was a good win for them to come from behind. And then obviously what they did against Udawa, um told us a lot about where they are. I think I think Udawa again, they're still trying to figure themselves out. I think Goose is going to do a fantastic job at Udawa. He's an Udawa guy, and he's invested in that program. And I think that was a, I think that was a great hire when they brought him in. But I think this game this week is is probably going to probably going to decide that region um, with Walker Valley and Ray County. Well, let's just let's just dive right into it. While we brought you on, one of the main reasons is uh, you know one, one of the longest rivalries around here. One of the most intense is Baylor McCauley. It's a series. It's a series of streaks, uh, uh, and, and we'll see if McCauley is able to to you know continue their streak they've had against Baylor. But you know anything in this rivalry, it, it has happened and will happen. So. Uh, can I just give us a couple of keys you think to look for on Friday night on the, on the CW Chattanooga? Um, Macaulay's really good. Baylor's really good. Um, I think we're going to see a strong running game out of Baylor. Uh, Caleb Hampton's had a fantastic year for them. Um, I think a lot of it's going to depend on um, what happens up front. Um, I think it's going to come down to the trenches. Um, we know Macaulay can throw the ball. They've got some athletes in. Uh, over there, it's not, you know, ever. But I think the big question was how do they replace a player like B.J. Harris, and I think they've answered that pretty well this year. Um, talking with Coach Potter uh, yesterday, he told us he said, you know, we learned a lot from the NBA game earlier this season. Um, he said we just overloaded our players. He said you've got to eventually. He said you just got to kind of dial it back. Coach, you may know this too. You can't throw too much on them because uh, they are, you know, still 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. But he said we we overloaded them to the point that they weren't able to think or react. Uh, and he said, now, you don't want to break it down too simple because then you'll get picked apart. But he says we've kind of found that happy balance, that, that line that we're, uh, you know, you can prepare to a certain point, but then after a while, your instincts have to take over. So I think that's going to be the thing is how are they, how does Macaulay react uh, to Baylor? 
Uh, I think they've got a lot of athletes that will just, if they're not overthinking things and they're able to react, I think it could be a long night for Baylor. No doubt. Well, uh, Dave, just kind of t- tell us how they can follow you, I guess, on Twitter and just kind of talk about you know how they can find it on the CW in Chattanooga if they're going to watch the game on TV or online. Uh, the game will be streaming. Uh, we'll have it on ChattanoogaCW.com if you guys are out. If everybody's out uh, at a game, you can pull that up on your phone. You can stream that game live right there. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Dave Keelan, at Dave Keelan T5Q. Um, I've been on there. I don't uh, you know, I always welcome followers. I'm probably one of the most boring followers on Twitter outside of Friday night because I'm tweeting score updates. That's about it. I don't, I don't get into anything else or retweeting anybody else. It's, uh, I, I'm pretty boring. But hey, if you wanna, if you wanna know what's going on in our game, I usually put some, uh, put some good stuff there on Friday night. No doubt. And before we let you go, we had uh, two guys you know somewhat well. I'm probably, unfortunately, in your case, right? Uh, Justin Sims and Cowboy Joe last week from the Red Zone on last week. Uh, (laughs) Any last parting words for not just those two, but me as well? Well, obviously, Joe sucks. Um, (laughs) That's a given. You know, I have to say that every week. Uh, Sims, uh, you know, I don't mind Sims if if he gets in my shot. It's just that he looked like Private Joker from uh, from Full Metal Jacket the night that he did it. He had shaved his head that week, and I was like, I was, I was like, dude. And he was wearing a he was wearing like a white undershirt t shirt. I was like, dude, did you just like, did you just like, did you just serve time or something? Did you get out? It's it's like, did they delouse you and then let you come to the game? How what's going on here? So, but no, uh, it was. Uh, uh, I don't mind him being on there. We just got he's got to work on his on his presentation. <laughs> well, we'll definitely do that. But Dave, thank you again for taking the time. A lot of great information about some games coming up and uh, just what you guys are doing. Continued success. And uh, we'll see you on the sideline uh, interrupting your live shot soon, brother. Absolutely. We'll, we'll Dave, see thank you guys you. soon. Thank Thanks, you, Dave. Dave. Have a great no one. Dave Keelan of the CW Chattanooga channel. Uh, it, was, it was good to have him on, get some, get some uh, insight from him. Um, guys, looking ahead to the next segment, we're going to break down some of last week's games and preview some of next week's games. So we'll be right back on the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box presented by Team FYN Sports. Welcome back to the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box presented by Team FYN Sports. That was a good week last week in football. Um, <coughs> that was a long segment. So have fun cutting that out, Mr. Caleb. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, South Pittsburgh goes on the road to North Jackson, a 21-20 winner. That was the red zone game of the week last week. Uh, Jeff, give us a little insight about just how crazy that finish was. Oh, you talk about just, you know, Dave mentioned atmospheres and kind of, you know, that's a good good thing about kind of what me and Dave do. We go to these different schools and communities throughout the year. And, you know, this is the first time I'd been to North Jackson. I think it was the first time the Red Zone had been there, you know, in the 28 years they've been doing the program. So, but, you know, uh, and if you ever go there for a game, make sure you have another cell phone provider besides Verizon because I have Verizon Wireless. I could not get any social media content out there as far as the data signal. So it's out there, obviously, you know, Stevenson. And, uh, but, you know, the pregame atmosphere was great. I talked to somebody uh, at half or close to the half for North Jackson. He said this is probably the most people they've had in a football game in a long, long time. So that just kind of shows you how both sides were anticipating this game. And, you know, they're only 10 miles apart. This The, the imaginary state line separates them, but, um, if, if, if Friday night was any indication, this is going to be a very fun series. If they continue, I'm sure that they, they'll do everything they can to do that. But, you know, uh, like I said, you know, South Pitt got down 14, nothing in the first half. It was a halftime score. Uh, and then, you know, North Jackson had a touchdown midway through the third quarter, I believe to make it 20, nothing. The extra point was blocked or it was no good. So it was 20 to nothing. South Pitt gets a touchdown before the fourth quarter started. So it was 20 to seven. And then, just a furious, you know, final six minutes of that game. I mean, because 
you know, and even when it got to 20 to nothing, I looked behind me. I was on the South Pit corner right there because I, I, I didn't want to move because my cell signal was good there. But I saw some orange and black clad me- members of the South Pittsburgh Nation leaving the gates near at the start of the fourth quarter. And, and man, what, what, a, what a fourth quarter they missed because, uh, you know, they had the, uh, you know, they had the two touchdowns late, the final, uh, you know, the final touchdown with about 45 seconds left to go. A, a, like a 60 yard uh, Jaden Mount to Reginald Hunter reverse pass to make it 20 to 20. The extra point was good. And that was the final score. Now, actually, Nor Jackson made it close. They got down inside the 30 yard line of South Pitt, but a quarterback sack on the last play of the game with no timeouts for the, for the, for the Chiefs negated that. So, uh, incredible game. And hopefully the start of many, you know, uh, close games between these two, uh, you know, border rivals. Cause I mean, it, it was good to see because, you know, obviously we know that South Pitt and Marion County weren't going to play this year or probably for the for- foreseeable future. So it's kind of good to see another team in the Valley region for South Pitt, you know, square off with them. So uh, yeah, he, a huge, uh, a huge win for, uh, you know, interim coach uh, West Stone and uh, Heath Grider and, and the entire South Pittsburgh community. Cause coach Stone told me after the game, he said, you know, they've been through a lot in the last 10 days and they, everybody knows the story about coach, uh, Chris Jones going back to Canada. So it's been a lot, it's been a lot of up and down and counted on pins and needles, he said over there. So just a huge congrats to them. And it was a great, great football game for sure. Yeah, and, and congratulations to the kids. They deserve it after after the 10 days that they'd been through. A win against a quality opponent in that fashion. That that, that does a lot for a football team and a, and a program. Even though it's South Pittsburgh, for that program, that was a big win considering the last 10 days that they had they had uh, been been through a game that really shocked me cleveland a 38 to nothing winner over walker valley i i'm gonna be honest I didn't see I, I cleveland was probably is probably gonna win six or seven times out of ten given that that you know how much talent cleveland has 38 to nothing really shocked me it really did i, I thought walker valley would would be really competitive in this game and it was definitely a shock to me what about you guys well, that, that just goes to show, I think, I guess the level between 5 and 6A, you know, with Bradley Central and Cleveland. But, uh, man, Cleveland has been silently really just kind of just, uh, you know, taking it to teams because, you know, I, I think a lot of people, including myself, thought Red Bank would come out and win that game in week one. And, you know, Red Bank struggled some. But Cleveland has uh, pretty much been going nonstop. They actually were in that game against Bradley Central. They had a halftime lead in that game or they'd be undefeated. They, it was a 14-point loss. But, you know, two pick sixes in the second half was the difference in that game. So, uh, yeah, Cleveland just keeps on rolling, man. They got a big game at Maryville this week, so we'll see if they're able to to do the David Goliath thing against the Rebs. But uh, yeah, just uh, you know, definitely pulling for them. You know, since we're not playing a local team, we can kind of pull for those guys for sure. So, uh, and who doesn't love a good underdog story, even though they've only lost you know one one time. So uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a, a big big win for them, and you know, for uh, Coach Aikens, it's kind of, like you said, Wes. It's kind of shocking not just the margin of victory, but just that offense not putting up a single point at all was kind of surprising to me as well. It did shock me. Uh, I think I think one of the things, you know, that's – you know, I, I love these games. Uh, I think these teams like Cleveland-Bradley, you know, Bradley beats Cleveland, Bradley uh, – you know, Cleveland can shake it off. Or Bradley beats Walker Valley, Walker Valley, can they shake it off and, you know, uh, and get back? back to playing in the region. You know, that's that's the most important part uh, to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if Bradley beats Walker Valley, yeah, that's big. That's big. But the thing Walker Valley needs to do is get, get everything shaken out, you know, get, make sure you're healthy and get back in the region play and get, get to where you're supposed to be, you know, in the playoffs. That's, that's really – playoffs is, is where you make your – well, I, I shouldn't say make your money, but kids aren't making money. But well, we, 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 we know who is, and it's not the kids, so that's all I'm going to say about that, 50%. So. Correct. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, play the fifth on that. I, I'm an employee. Um, McMinn County goes on the road, a 30-29 winner over East Hamilton on Hurricane Hill, and a, a good game there. Yeah, that, that was a good game for sure. And, you know, and like we were talking about with Dave, you know, East Hamilton's loaded with athletes. We've seen them before. Uh, we were there for the first game against Udawa in the early in the season, and they got some good weapons, and they're, they're going to show them again against Central on Friday night. But, uh, you know, again, it's that 4A to 6A, you know, kind of 
threshold there. You know, obviously more numbers and, you know, can be more of an athlete, more better athletes. But, you know, for Coach Reynolds' squad, you definitely – you don't want to do moral victories, but to to be able to be in that game with a team like McMinn County who's had athletes in the past and they continue to have them this year, uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's it's a good thing as well because it'll give more motivation to uh, to get ready for a bigger region game, which could be the region championship against Central on Friday night. Coach Stone, McMahon County finally gets a win after a couple hard weeks. Well, they 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 had some hard weeks, as you said. Um, but there again, you know, it's you know, are they going to hang it up and quit? Are they going to continue to play? I think I think they trailed most of this ball game, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, but anyway, you know, I think uh, I think Coach Cagle has still has a young football team and. Uh, they're getting better every week, so you know we may we may see something in, in these next uh, in this next month. All right, guys, a, a couple quick games. We don't have to go in depth on these, but Cumberland County goes all the way to Polk County, twenty four to ten win for Cumberland County. Teleco big over Copper Basin, forty six to eight. Copper Basin really stumbling this year under under uh, Coach Grabowski up there. Ray County a thirty five to twenty one win over Red Bank. And then McMahon Central, I'll say they got – it was a lot to a little over in Mexico County. Like I said, 61 to nothing. Um, Jeff, Kate, any games this week that are that are notable? Like this coming week or from last week? I'm sorry. This week, this week. Uh, I haven't really looked at this week's schedule much besides the ones we did, but just I, I want to throw in a couple more from last week. I, I don't know if you guys remember, but we mentioned that uh, – you know, one game to kind of keep an eye on was that Sequatchie County Bledsoe County game, that rivalry game, the battle for the stump, as they call it. Well, that that was one of the better games of the week. It was a thirty-one to twenty-nine Sequatchie County win, and you know the uh, kind of Sequatchie County's been one of the hotter teams in the area. You know, three straight wins after starting out zero and two, and then kind of one of the hotter teams in the area to start the year in Bledsoe County. You know, they, they've they've dropped their last two games after starting unbeaten, so it's kind of a, a role reversal for both of these teams and. You know, for Bledsoe County, they had a chance with about 30 seconds left to go, less than that, to, to, to get the game-winning field goal, but they missed it. So, Sequatchie County gets the big win. And, uh, yeah, just a great a great win for the Indians for sure. And, you know, just a couple other things I noticed from last week too. You know, a couple of undefeated teams still stay undefeated. You know, Silverdale got a big win against the number one team in Division Two single A, Donaldson mm-hmm. Christian, by 20 points. So, you know, Coach Connor's squad is still rolling strong, unbeaten, and uh, – you know, I, I'm trying to think, looking over my notes here. Tyner still stays unbeaten, a big win against Saudi Daisy. So, like Dave was saying in the first segment, you know, that region with Bledsoe, Marion County, Tyner, and Megs, you know, we talked about it a lot in the last few weeks. That's that's a region that's going to be really hard hitting, especially coming into this last month of the year. That uh, that region championship could be at the matchup between Megs and Tyner down the road. So, we'll see about that. But yeah, just, uh, you know, huge win for Tyner and Coach Chandler over there. And then uh, one thing I do, obviously, Marion County says I'm beaten as well. So that kind of ties into that two way. But, you know, one thing I do want to mention here, our audience may, may, may overlook this team before we move into this week's games is uh, Grace Baptist Academy. Obviously, they were a Division II single A team, not a lot of players on that team to fill the team. And they actually moved down to an eight man football league. It's an independent league this year. Well, they, they, they're undefeated in that region, guys. And that's a great story, obviously, with the Easter 2020 tornadoes that took out pretty much all their facilities and all, you know, they really don't have, they have a temporary home, you know, and they, I think they played their last game at Hunter Middle School here in Ottawa. So, uh, uh, you know, just a huge, huge uh, momentum for, for uh, you know, that, that program over there. They've had some hard times, you know, and uh, it's definitely great to see because they're putting up like crazy amount of points. They put up 44 points. I kind of want to see – how an eight man football team in game works, you know, cause I know there's different rules and different formations and stuff. So yeah, crazy times for sure for, for them. So I just want to give them a little bit of love cause you know, they, they don't get a whole lot of recognition. They didn't do it when they were playing 11 on 11, barely having guys to play that. So definitely uh, good, good times and good, good effort for the uh, Golden it. Eagles of Grace Academy. You need to go see it. Is it, it fun it, coach? Yes. Uh, there was a, uh, there was a team up in Blue Ridge, uh, a, uh, Christian school and they had an eight man league and I, I wanted to see it. I went out there to see it and it's, it's unique. It is. But, uh, but, uh, 
some games. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. No, Wes, I, I, I was coming back to what you were saying, I promise. But, uh, you know, I think really the three games are, are the ones we talked about with Dave in that first segment. Obviously, you got Central at East Hamilton. Both teams are undefeated in their region. So that game will could decide, you know, the region championship, but also be a big one as far as, you know, the top two teams in each region get home games in the first round. So that's something to keep in mind on that as well. It'll be our uh, Coca-Cola Red Zone game of the week as well. So, uh, between that, Baylor McCauley, everybody knows the story about that. Uh, you know, if you ever are around Chattanooga, you'll see like Baylor flags or McCauley flags planted in different areas. I saw one on a billboard out toward my house. So, you know, they're, they're everywhere getting the rivalry started. So, uh, that, that's a big one for sure. Cause like Dave mentioned, McCauley is probably the best team in the state of Tennessee and looking to go three, you know, three peed for a state championship. And then, obviously, a, a, a big one, you know, we're talking about Coach Aiken's squad, uh, just a big game. They're hosting Ray County this week. So, we'll kind of see how – are they able to kind of shake off that uh, that uh, shellacking, that mercy rule game they experienced by Cleveland, or does Ray County continue the the mojo they've had? Because that's uh, – Ray has won the last seven games in that in that series between those two. But the last two games in this series have been decided by a total of nine points. So, I expect another close game, hopefully, for sure, in this one between the uh, Golden Eagles and the Mustangs. You know, I think I think we've made a point, and I'm going to be real quick with this. Uh, this time of year, I, I kind of like to look at regions. Is there a region out there come playoff Friday, the first round, that can sweep the other region? You see what I'm saying? You're talking about Megs, Tyner, Sequatchie, and, and, and those guys. Um you know, I, I like to I like to look at that. Is is there is there a number four that's gonna that's going to be the number one in that in that first round? I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head, coach. I think right there that that two A region those four teams are in is probably your the best bet. To I mean, you know, our, obviously it's early on. We'll talk more about that. You know, as Halloween comes around, yeah. the playoffs start. But I think you are right on. I definitely agree. That two A region with those four teams is your best chance to have a, a four versus one uh, upset for sure. Right. South Pittsburgh at Dade County, Georgia, another big one for South Pittsburgh, and then uh, McMahon Central host Kingston. I gotta throw, gotta show some love to my guys in blue. Um, I'm just glad you're impartial, Wes. That's why we have you on here, pal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in my room that is McMahon Central. Blue. No, but I mean, yeah, that that's a great matchup you brought in there, Wes, for sure. That Day County South Pittsburgh game. That's kind of a COVID addition to the schedule. Like, you know, we saw those last year, and you know, Day just had a great year as well. You know, they have a, you know, I know Tim Tao is going to like this. They have a big upset win over Pepperell last week, and I think Pepperell plays Fannin. But uh, you know, that's just that's going to be at Day County. Should be another great atmosphere, and. You know, based on what we saw, what I saw with, with South Pitt bringing the crew to North Jackson, I think those Alabama officials got a baptism by fire by the South Pittsburgh Railbirds, as we found out about last week. <laughs> well, those GSA, GSHSA officials for uh, over in Dade County are probably going to experience the same that uh, that the North Jackson folks got last week from the South Pittsburgh faithful, for sure. I, I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. Guys, our next segment. We're going to have a little fun. Uh, we'll just uh, we'll tease you with that. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. Welcome back to the Southeast Tennessee Friday Night Press Box Podcast presented by Team FYN Sports. Guys, let's have a little fun. Last week we we had the Red Zone crew on. We were laughing. We were smiling. Coach Stone, I mean, he was smiling. From <laughs> and like that right there and laughing. And, and uh, we kind of talked about atmospheres that we like, things that we like, stadiums that we like. With them, we didn't get our a chance to give ours. So – Coach Stone, I'm going to start with you. But, you know, you were you were a coach for a long time. Uh, you've been a fan of football for a long time. In the high school setting, what are some of your favorite atmospheres to be a part of? Um, I as as a rival, 
uh, one of the things that, uh, and I think we kind of touched on this down at at South Pittsburgh, they've got a they've got a rug or a runway that's about two two feet wide. And the average age of those men on either side of that thing is about, you know, 65 years old when you come out of the dressing room. And, you know, I mean, they're giving it to you there. You know, you know, uh, I had a running back at Copper Basin that had, you know, was a 4,000 yard rusher. And uh, I never will forget, he, he was always right in front of me. He was always in the back of the line. Those guys are going, 34, there ain't no way you weigh 195. They, you don't weigh 195, huh? You know, 4,000 yards, you, who do you play against? You know, stuff like that. And, I mean, it absolutely, you know, sometimes, sometimes we went down there and, I mean, you know, you play South Pittsburgh and you're going to get – you're going to get all they got. And uh, sometimes we were very intimidated. And uh, there was there was two or three times that we went down there and and uh, they got us. They, they got us fired up. But uh, South Pittsburgh, probably one of my best uh, atmospheres. I you guys, you guys, uh, I know we're Tennessee right now, but uh, you guys got to go to Blue Ridge some night. They got the. Uh, you know, they got the big helmet. They got the uh, the smoke. They got a band of about 200 people out there. And uh, and then uh, the last couple of years, they put in those uh, LED lights, that those strobe light things, you know. And, and it's it, it absolutely raises a hair on your arms when when uh, when they come out because uh, and the people. But but let me tell you a little bit. Let me tell you a little story, but and I'm going to tell this because I'd like to see this happen in Tennessee. I was reading today they have they have a group called the Blue Crew, and Friday Friday night Friday night's ball game they're going to meet at the tennis courts, which is about probably a quarter mile from from the stadium, but they're bringing in the taco truck, and and. And there, the blue crew gets down there around the tennis courts. They got the taco truck there, and they get fired up. They 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 absolutely get fired up. When we were up there two or three weeks ago uh, for that uh, all decade team, you know, I was sitting over there, kind of above where the students, and all of a sudden, here comes about you know two hundred fifty three hundred kids coming in. They're they're dressed up and everything, but they they put on they put on a great uh, a great uh, you know get every they get everybody in the game and like I say you got a you got a high school band that's got two hundred kids in it and I'm telling you they it's awesome it really is uh, but that that's been my 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 deal um, hadn't been to really you know a lot of concession stands around in high school football or anything like that but uh, you know for 40 years come out of you know come out of a dressing room and and it's it's an awesome experience in a lot of places that uh, that I've been and uh, like Jeff said Meigs County's got a uh, you know that it's terrific uh, I told somebody the other day if I was the uh, if I was the coach at Bradley, I would try to make me a ramp down through there like Clemson instead of them steps and run off that, you know, run off onto the field. But uh, high school football is fun. And, and, you know, everybody's everybody's got it. Uh, the kids at uh, Fanning County, they all carry an American flag out. And when when that when that rolls up, you know, it's 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 unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, like you said, high school football it's everywhere. And Jeff Cates everywhere, part of the Red Zone crew. He's let me, let me let me tell you another one. I don't know if Jeff's been around. Did you ever go was you ever around the uh, Sequatchie, the old Sequatchie Stadium? Uh I don't think so. Uh, the first time we went, I've only I've been doing this for fifteen years. So the first time we went no. to Sequatchie was probably in the, in the last ten. So here's the here's the best one, guys. We go to Sequatchie for a playoff game, and you go in the visitors' dressing room, 
and you cannot go out and around anywhere because it's all fenced. The, the old stadium was all fenced in. And so I asked the guy that took us down to the dressing room, I said, well, how do we get to the state? You know, how do we get onto the field? And literally there was a, there was a tunnel of about 20, 20, 25 feet. That was about maybe four foot tall. And I mean, two, two people might could have got through it, but you had to get down and, 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 and crawl, you know, today, I don't know what they would do with me today. I, I couldn't, I, I'd never be able to get out onto the field, but you know, it was, it was neat and uh, everything, but you had to crawl that 20, 25 feet there about four foot off the ground. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a case, but uh, you know, now we got, bigger and better stadiums and it, it, it and I I just thought it was neat. I really did. And I've heard the I've heard the stories about Philip Lolly down at North Jackson. You talking about uh, you talking about South Pittsburgh and them playing. Philip Lolly used to paint the visitors dressing room pink. Okay. Like Iowa. Yeah. Paint it pink and put vases with flowers in all the all the, all the lockers. <laughs> it, it was crazy. You know, I, I thought, you know, I thought about all that stuff, but it, it, it's a great, it's a great game being, you know, sometimes it, it's just, it's just amazing. It is. Jeff, what are, what are some of your favorite? favorite what, places? Well, I, I guess coach stone kind of mentioned, you know, the, the smaller, you know, environments to me have been the most fun. Now, it's not – I mean, South Pittsburgh, obviously, I would definitely say that as well. But it, for me, it has to be a Marion County-South Pittsburgh game yeah. at, at Bean Stadium because, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, rivals dislike each other, but that one right there is just pure hatred. <laughs> Both sides are packed out. And it's just, a, you know, like I mentioned before about South Pittsburgh, you know, the track is 10 deep with people all the way around the track, mm-hmm. you know, just, just howling like, like they were at North Jackson. So that was a road game. Imagine a South Pittsburgh Marion County game at Bean Stadium where they're just yelling. It, it's both sides, but yeah, that one's it just the, the pageantry. You know, South Pittsburgh walking out holding their helmets to bad company. That's a great thing as well as they're as they're warming up. That's definitely a a great atmosphere, as Dave said. Just rolling into town, it's like Mayberry. You know, the lights are out in the businesses, but everybody's heading toward Bean Stadium before going to Steve. We gotta go to Steve Arenas first, and then go to Bean Stadium to watch a football game, but. Yeah. Um, I guess if I, I also would have to agree with what Dave said as well. A Baylor Macaulay game on the campuses, you know, just makes it ten times better when you're having to get there as a member of the media at like three thirty, four o'clock in the afternoon for a seven thirty kickoff just to find a good parking place and not wait in traffic, you know, for for a long, long time. That tells you kind of how important that game is, and uh, it's definitely a great atmosphere, great environment as well, and. Uh, uh, yeah, just those are just two off the top of my head. But, you know, everyone has like the different little distinctions to make to stand out for themselves. And obviously, you know, they're a bathroom of, like toilet paper chained to the walls or, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, it, that's what I like about these schools, whether it's public or private, 1A or 6A. They're all kind of the same, but they all have, you know, different things that make them stand out apart from each other. So uh, let, me ask, that- let me ask you this. Does Marion County still have the steam whistle? I believe they do. Uh, it's been a few years since I've been there, but you know, South Pitt's kind of taking the mantle with the pirate ship and the cannon firing off every time the pirates score. So, uh, but uh, when, yeah, uh, that- when I was uh, when I was at McMinn Central, we were playing them in the playoffs. No, I, I was at Copper Basin, and we were playing them in the playoffs. And uh, the, a friend of mine, his son played at Polk County. Well, they they played Polk County, and and they were. They were ahead like 49 to nothing. Well, this friend of mine, this he just walked around the track. You know, he'd stop and lean on the fence and this, that, and the other. So uh, the score was 49 to nothing, something like that, and Marion scored again. And he was next to that that steam whistle. <laughs> you know, they, they'd pull that steam whistle. Woo-hoo! I mean, you could hear it. You could hear it for miles. So he decided he was going to go over there. He looked, and there was about like six minutes to go in the game. He he decided, I'm going to go over there and just ask that guy, look, y'all, 
Y'all beat us fair and square, beat us, beat us like a drum and everything. Would you please not blow that steam whistle? Uh, in, you know, anymore. He said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm about had it. <laughs> it's a, I've had enough of it. So that guy's up on that tractor and he looks down off of him. And he said, sure, buddy. He said, I'm going to blow it one more time. <laughs> he pulled that thing down and just held on to it. <laughs> he said, we don't quit blowing this whistle down here. Uh, Fanning County has the cannon. Fanning County has the cannon. They, they, they put on, a, they, they got a tremendous atmosphere up there. But uh, well, Wes, uh, obviously, the Vince Central is going to be number one on your list. But get, give us like one, a, a two or a three right after them, if you can, about your favorite environments. Vince Central is obviously number one. I, of course, four years I was this. Yeah, prestigious body was painted in either white, Columbia blue, maybe it had a pink. That's great. I mean, it was fantastic. And I was the guy my junior and senior year ran the flag down the track. Man, it was we had a good time, but. Um, I'll give you one as a student that I really love. One from a press or a, a radio, um, radio, Loudoun County. You go to Loudoun County, they put on a feast, and you talk about a hospitality room, a hospitality room that I mean, all KFC fried chicken, pizza. They've got if you like Italian, they've got Italian there. They've got I mean everything, everything under the sun to eat. Is at Loudoun County. Loudoun County does it right. They give you a a media book for the game. They they make programs for each individual game. History. I mean, it is fantastic. Loudoun County does it right. Um, and as a student, let's see. I went to good places uh, during my during my years. I know this isn't a. Um, this is also going to be a McMahon Central thing, but it's not going to be football because football is number one. One A. This is not a basketball podcast. It's a football podcast. But Coach Stone painted up in the roundhouse at McMahon Central watching Johnny Morgan coach women's basketball. Let, let me tell you, I chills right there already. But Johnny Morgan, he's a TWS Hall of Fame member. He's almost to 1,000 wins in his career in high school high school coach man he was that's fantastic painted up in the roundhouse probably 1a to paint it up at charger stadium but signal mountain also has a good view signal mountain up there looking over the hill take the w road up <laughs> that's 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 fun um, let me give you one eight years old mac men central basketball okay they come out shoot layups you know, lay up, lay up, lay up. Then they go into this thing. Coach A.W. Davis, had, who had played it at, at the University of Tennessee, and Coach Cornwall, I think, was his assistant. Amy. They break into this thing of uh, Sweet Georgia Brown. Is that, is that the song, The Gold yeah. Brothers? And they got this little warm-up thing. And they got about four guys back over here. That they go through that, tap that ball around, and everything, throw it behind their back, and everything, and all of a sudden this this guy, and I the the first one I'll I'll throw out there, Bill Landreth, about six foot four, comes down comes down in from the right side and slam dunks it, and I'm telling you, nobody went to the concession stand during home uh, during during that part. That's that's great. Well, guys, we we appreciate you you listening to the podcast. Make sure you. You like, share, do not subscribe. I've said that four weeks in a row, and I caught myself doing it. But, guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. Like, share, and uh, thank you for to uh, Dave Keelan for coming on. Uh, uh, you for listening to the podcast, like I said, like, share, give it a listen, give us a thumbs up on Facebook, and like it on Twitter. Uh, for Jeff Kate, Coach Mark Stone, guys, thank you for listening, and good night.